Hi! So I've recently made this Princess Mononoke animation in Blender and in this video I'm going to show you my shading process as well as how to make the line art. So first, after importing your character to Blender, you can go here in the render settings and make sure to set the color management to standard. This will enable us to have full control over the visuals and it's definitely a much better option for toon style renders than Filmic for example, which works best for realism. So we can now go to the shading tab and switch to render view from up here. Select an object and add a new material. You can delete the principal BSDF and add a diffuse BSDF instead. Then a shader to RGB and the color ramp. Connect all the nodes just like this. And to get a 2D look, make sure to set the color ramp to constant. As you can see, we now have two colors. You can adjust them by simply using the color picker or just type the hex code below. And that's basically all for the shading. It's super simple to make and can easily turn any 3D object into a 2D style one. So from here, you can simply replicate the same shading process for everything else and just change the colors. Also, to make your work a bit easier, instead of creating a new material for each object, you can select two or more objects and press Ctrl L to link materials between them and then duplicate the material by pressing this icon over here so that you can add a new set of colors to it without changing the original. Then, if you want your object to have more than one material, you can just press the plus button over here. Then, go into edit mode and select all the faces that you want to have a different color. And with the second material selected, just click Assign. For the rest of the character, I follow the exact same steps I showed you earlier, so there is absolutely no difference in the shading. Now, the only problem I had with this character was the hair shading, which as you can see did not look properly using this method. Often with 2D style characters like this one, you don't want the shadows to mix up with the light parts, as you can notice it's happening here. And to fix this, since my model used multiple curves for the hair, I decided to keep only one color and delete the other. And I also renamed this material to Hair Light. Then, as you can see in my case, the character is being lit from the right side, so I'm only going to add the shadows on the left. And to do that, I just duplicated the material and renamed it to Hair Shadow. After that, I simply changed the color. Finally, I selected all the curves making up the left side of the hair and just applied the same material to them. With that done, as you can see the hair looks a lot better, but however, this did provide a small problem for the animation and you can probably already notice it over here. When the character is moving, the shadow doesn't change, so it can look unnatural from different angles, especially if you have a lot of movement. So to fix this, I came up with the idea of a color transition. This basically means adding two color ramps and a mix shader to combine them, which will enable us to switch between colors using its factor. So to make this work, you can go to the material properties and from here you'll be able to change the factor of the mix shader. Then go to the frame right before the shadow is naturally supposed to change. And with your cursor over the factor, press I to add a keyframe. Move to the next frame, set the factor to zero and add another keyframe. Now back to where we were, in the left corner you can switch from object to world. And here you'll be able to see the shader for the world color. As you can see, if you change the color straight away, it will affect the shading on your mesh. I probably say this for every video, but for those of you who don't know how to fix this, you can just add light path, duplicate the background node, and add a mix shader to connect all the nodes. And now with the second background node, you can control the world color without any changes on your shading. 
Also, another thing that's really important for 2D style renders is the shadows. And as you can see here, the shadows appear pretty soft, which is not really what we want. So to make them look sharp instead, you can select the light and go into the light settings. From here, all you have to do is set the radius, filter and resolution limit to zero. And now our shadows look really sharp and nice. Moving on, we can now add the line art. So for this character in particular, I used two different types of line art. A silhouette for the hair only and contour for everything else. This will be really important later on, but first let's add the line art itself. So since this method uses grease pencil, I'm going to adjust the camera position a bit, as the lines are created based on your camera angle. Then press Shift A to search, go to grease pencil and add the collection line art. You can organize your objects by moving them into different collections using M. Go to the modifiers tab and from here you can select any collection you want. But as you can see, even though the lines look good on the mask, the modifier is also affecting objects outside of the collection. So if this also happens to you, something that I found out to work pretty well is enabling the intersection with contour option under chaining. Then go to intersections and tick the first box to add a collection mask. This might not work properly for every scene, but you can still try it out if you have the same issue. You can then press Shift D to duplicate your line art and apply it to the other collections as well. If somehow you encounter unwanted lines, you might want to shade your object smooth or apply a subdivision modifier to them, like I did here. Also, if you want to add more lines yourself, you can go into edit mode, select an edge like this, then go up here and click on mark sharp. This will add a line exactly where you want it to be. Finally, we can now add the line art for the hair. And like I said earlier, we're going to switch it from contour to silhouette, which however only looks right if the object is shaded smooth, so make sure to do that. This way there will only be lines around the shape of the hair, so you can also disable intersections as we'll no longer need them. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments and thank you so much for watching.